everybody! Welcome to week five of Craft Hags. Uh, today we're gonna be messing around with more felt, and uh, I'm I'm excited. We're gonna we're gonna be making some crazy shapes today. I think we'll see. We'll see if it works out. Last week's experiments were uh, quite the thing. I'll get them out for you really quick. Here's how they turned out. In case you didn't catch uh, online. Um, I posted these to the craft tags Instagram and Twitter, but uh, here's the first one. This one's probably the most successful one. Uh, yeah, we were just going for like a, a color test. Hi everybody in the chat, nice to see you guys today. Here's the other thing we tried where these, these two definitely didn't work out like we thought they would. Um, but the cool thing about this is, if I really liked these, but like they weren't that great, I could always uh, paint them with some dye. Like that would tone down this white. That might look really cool. Or I could embroider stuff on there. I could add beads. I could do whatever I wanted to uh, perfect the effect. And I'm sure I'll actually be doing that um, on the finished product that we get here. Um, Quick mention, uh, we're listening to Sirenscape today, as usual. Today we're listening to uh, Friendly Tavern, I think. And so there's some nice fire for you guys to listen to, and some minstrels, and uh, some people clinking their glasses together, and hopefully it's nice and rea relaxing. But yeah, so today we're just... We're just messing around again. It's going to be a nice, chill stream. Um, we're just going to see what we can do here. What I've got, this is the pattern piece uh, for the um, panel I need to make out of felt. And I will be sewing it onto this waist cincher that I've modified. It's just an old thing I've had laying around. But, uh, you know this old thing. <laughs> but, um... This has all the bone structure and zippers and hardware in the back already, so it's perfect, and we're just going to redecorate it, because that'll be so freaking easy. And, you know, if there's an easy option, go for it, right? So this is one of the side panels, and I've got another one here, but we'll just be um, testing today. Hopefully I can get something out of this one that I can use. Uh, otherwise I'll just remake whatever uh, whatever I need to do over. But these are two of the pattern pieces. They'll go together um, on the sides. But this is about how much area we'll be covering um, with these textural pieces I'm trying to figure out today. And let me show ya. Where did my mushroom book go? Oh, it's on the chair behind me. Derps! But yeah... We've got we've got some nice inspiration here. Um, this is a cool one. It's got a lot of that blue and purple that's part of our uh, palette. We'll get out the palette too, so we know exactly what colors we need to stick within. I started getting really inspired by some of these crazy mushrooms in here. Like there were some pink and purple ones up front that. I bookmarked, but I, I shouldn't have because they aren't in my <laughs> they aren't in my color palette. But they're so pretty, and these green ones are pretty nice too. I really like these shiny green ones. I actually saved this one because I think I might make the mushroom familiar that I need to make look like this because this is so cute. His name is Salt. My mushroom familiar, Scrummy's mushroom familiar. Sorry, not mine. <laughs> um, but yeah. This is a large book of mushrooms, probably the best thing I've ever bought. Um, but today, I think we're going to be going for a mix between these kinds. They've got rings of color. I know it's probably hard to see, but if you Google um, bracket mushroom, you'll probably see a ton of different kinds of really brightly colored, usually they're orange mushrooms that grow straight out of trees like shelves. And that's the effect we're going for today. Um, somebody asked in the chat if these are G933 headphones, and they are. Yeah, good eye. Um, I like them a lot. They only act up sometimes. <laughs> 
But yeah, I really like this blue, and I really like this purple. There's a little bit too much orange in this one. As you can see, it's a little warm for our color palette. But if we just replace those colors in that formation with the colors from our palette, we'll be good. And then we'll just be creating our own new kind of mushroom instead of trying to copy one exactly, which will be pretty nice. But um, what I'm going to be trying to do here is uh, making um, panels that stick out from the flat surface so that when I gl sew them onto the side of the corset and they're like sitting, you know, on my sides, they'll flip up like or flip over like this and create that shelf effect. And I'm not quite sure how well it's going to work, but we're going to try it. Um, and so I'll show you how... I, I've seen a couple people try things like this, so I think, I think we can figure it out. Um, that'll be... I'll wait before I cut stuff, actually. I'm getting ahead of myself here. But yeah, first we need to make the base layer. This is bigger than the pattern because... Um, in case you missed last week, I talked a lot about how when you felt stuff, it'll shrink. Um, this is the pattern, and then I don't know if you can see it on that plastic, but this is how big the backing material is. And we're going to Nuno felt this. Um, and because it's going to have a backing that the felt sticks to, we really don't need to make it very thick. Um, so it'll be nice and light, and hopefully the lighter they are, the more they'll kind of fluff up fluff apart. Just checking my sound levels. I think we're good. But yeah, let's dig out some colors here. Um, as you can see on the actual garment, the colors we're working with in here are a lot of grays, warm yellowish browns, and greens. Um, I could do a lot of crazy purple and stuff, but I think I'm going to save the purples for the cloak and the pants and then these little spots here uh, on the shoulders. Um, if you want to get a better look at any of these documents, they're all in the Twitter moment on the uh, Craft Hags Twitter. That's just at Craft Hags. Nothing crazy. But um, also, you could see I posted the finished tunic that we did, I think it was in episode two or three, maybe? Um, but I, I hand dyed that tunic on the stream a few weeks ago and it was super fun. But I finally got a good photo set up. I've been, I've been hoping to not post too many like low quality, you know, crafting pictures where like everything's a mess and trying to up my brand quality a little bit so I uh, invested in a cheap invested in a cheap Amazon Prime photo setup and backdrop and hopefully I'll be making stuff look fancier in the days to come I'm just going to be pulling out all the colors that I think might work. Um, also, I got a new shipment in from World of Wool, and I got some weird shit, you guys. It's going to be... This is... These are called Silk Carrier Rods, and it's a byproduct of the silk manufacturing process, and I think... I, I, I've read about it a couple times, and I still don't quite understand. I need to, like, watch a video about how they make silk so I can understand what they're talking about. But those things are like, I don't know, they're like cocoons from the silkworms and they like pinch them and roll them up and do all sorts, of, you know, they just like get stuck in the machinery, but they're really, they're untreated. They're kind of gross. Um, but I'm going to see what kind of cool textures we can make with them because they are, they're soft and silky and shiny like silk yet uh also quite disgusting i don't know if i can get that in the light where you guys can see it but 
it is, and they reek, like, really bad. <laughs> but, like, obviously, these natural textures and stuff will be great for making mushroom-looking stuff. Right? And they're shiny. I could dye them if I wanted to. There's a lot of stuff we can do. And thank you uh, for the belated birthday wish, Dr. Cantrez. I appreciate it. I had a great birthday. I know a lot of you uh, wished me happy birthday online. I appreciate it. Ugh. I am 28 million years old now. So let's dig through. Yeah, we're going to want our slubs for sure. What kind of look are we going for again? I already forgot. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze, hang on. Goodness. Uh, <laughs> those uh, silk carrier rods are... Um, I'm not allergic to anything, but they are... <laughs> they stink, guys. They stink. So I'm just, I'm going to keep pulling out stuff because I think we're going for like a greenish, like a yellow green, well, like an olivey green mixed with purple mushroom. So we need green and purple. I'm going to try to focus here with uh, hints of warm. So we'll get, these three colors are pretty darn spot on look at that oh yeah oh yeah yeah and then um we'll we'll mix some of that in there that yellow is pretty close to that green um we'll do those for texture we'll keep that gray out just for some variation it's always a good idea if you're going to be making your own fabrics and you're trying to make it look natural to throw a couple extra variations of color in there just to keep it from looking too samey. I know that's not a word. What would you call it? Homogenous? I don't know. I don't know. And then I think... Yeah, let's get this grody yellow out too. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh man, everybody in the chat is older than me. I know. I'm a wee babe. I still have I still have a lot of time here. <laughs> what is this? Black? We don't want black. I need to get a better storage system where I can see all of my felt without throwing it all over my room. Probably. So I've got two kinds of uh, Angelina here, too, um, that we'll play with. This one's an iridescent blue into white, um, so that might be too light, but we'll see. Uh, we don't want it to be too sparkly, either, because she needs to look under darky, not um, glam, I guess. Need to sip my tea. Ugh, I'm trying this new tea. My stomach's been acting up lately, and this one's like rose hips or something, and it it tastes nothing like roses, for sure. I've got a little bit of this extra green too, so almost the same color all right and then look I got white guys I finally got white all right so let's move all this stuff over the other cool thing is when I ordered this silk I got real silk too so this is like wool. It's not even going to show up. It's so bright. But uh, look how shiny it is. 
Ugh, and it's so soft, like you would not even believe it. So soft. Love it. I love it. And then I also got this other cool stuff called um, tinsel. I think it's all acrylic, but it's super shiny. And so if I've got, like it's shinier than silk. But because it's acrylic, we have to mix it in with other natural fibers or it won't stick. It's pretty slippery. Um, so we gotta be careful with that, but we could get some really cool kind of glossy effects if we use that correctly, so that'll be fun. Here, let's just make a pile right here. Like everybody can see everything we got. We'll clear our workspace a little bit. I'm just making a big old mess. Alrighty. So I think the base color for this uh, corset is going to have to be mostly this moss color. This is a little bit dark on the camera, I can see, but it's a little lighter in person. But it is like a really nice grayish green, which is what we're looking for. It also matches my Twitch overlay, so that's nice. <laughs> I should put some mushrooms in my Twitch overlay, I think. I mean, because this is basically what I'm going to be doing for most of the season of craft tags, so, you know. So I'm just going to start, um, this is the back, and we're going to be building upwards. Towards the more visible layers. So this is really just a base layer that we probably won't see very much of. And we're going to go super thin because I really don't want these to be heavy. Um, not that it really matters. It's on a corset, so it's not like I'm afraid of it not being light and airy enough or anything because it's tied to my body. It kind of doesn't matter. but. I don't want it to look too bulky either because um, I'm wearing a waist cincher because Scrummy is supposed to be a gnome who has kind of scavenged her whole life. I wouldn't picture her to be uh, a, a really healthy weight, you know, even like she's going to be pretty gaunt and uh, maybe even malnourished. <laughs> um, so while it doesn't matter for weight purposes, I do want to keep this uh, thinnish just to keep the silhouette of my body. Um, like, I'm, I'm a pretty skinny person in general, but um, this waist cincher is going to make those uh, shapes just a little bit more pronounced and obvious. Um, and when you're copying a character that's been drawn for fantasy, obviously uh, the proportions are always pretty extreme. Um, so if you're emulating a character like that, you know what kind of shape you're copying. And in this case, I need to look as unhealthy as possible without actually losing any more weight. So. good news is I've got plenty of this stuff. I think, yeah, this is 300 milligrams. Obviously a lot. Um, I ordered that for... I, th I don't remember what, what I ordered this color for, but I, for some reason I needed a lot of green. Um, but I was mistaken, and I definitely didn't need that much. Because I'm still... Uh, still most of it's here. And I finished whatever project that was a long time ago. And That's why I really love working with wool and felting is because it really doesn't take a whole lot, especially if you're not making huge garments or really thick garments. It goes a long way.
and I flipped my uh, cutting board over. It was light gray last week, but I have it on the back side, which is a dark gray. So hopefully that can help with visibility a little bit. I know it's tough to see when I'm working with a lot of translucent and light colored stuff, so yeah. And I see we have a newcomer in the chat uh, asking what a craft hag is. <laughs> uh, I'm a craft hag. Um, basically, this show is for people who like to make stuff and they also like D&D. But um, this season we're going to be focusing on costumes. Um, and so I'm doing some wet felting. to make some cool, underdark-looking, mushroomy textures to put on my costume. And I'll probably, uh, next week, start building the corset for you guys to watch. That'll be fun. And then uh, we can start doing beading and other embroidery and stuff like that. And I think we decided that boy craft tags are called craft hermits or something. I think I think we uh we decided on that a while ago. So yeah, there's the base layer and then um I'm going to Let me think about this. So they're going out that way. We'll have to go that way first. So we gotta start at the top. This is where stuff starts getting a little bit confusing. But I'm gonna be using this plastic to make a shield. Kinda like a little sandwich. And then so I'm going to start at the top and work down to what's going to be hanging down on the bottom. So this is where <laughs> I'm going to start layering in the different colors. Um, I think I want yellow and white underneath. And I'm going to pull out a little bit of this silk. Oh, it's so soft, you guys. I can't even believe it. Oh, it's so wispy. You can kind of see how shiny it is. Oh, look at that. Ah, I can't even feel it going over my hand. That's so weird. But yeah, this stuff is really soft, you guys. It's like not even existent. And then I want to have some weird texture to make these things flap around a little bit. You'll see what I'm talking about after we do one. Um, I know I'm not explaining myself very well. <laughs> yeah, let's get some of these lighter greens and then browns mixed in here. And then just a little bit of this blue, just to tone down all that warm, saturation looking color. And this is all just a test. If it all fails, it's fine. <laughs> but we'll see. Hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> I'm always amused when somebody in the chat 
receive my tattoo. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. So I think what I'm going to try to do on this test is just see if I can get the structure to work. And then I'll actually worry about putting in the designs at a different point. So I'll save the silk, I think, because not only is it a little bit more expensive, but... But then that way I can... I can focus on getting the the texture correct and not um, the texture and the color and the everything. Yeah, let's see how this one works. And so I put some of those uh, big glob ones in there because after it's all squished together, um, I, w I don't want it to just be a flat, like perfectly thin pancake shape. I kind of want it to do that mushroom thing where it has like thick parts and thin parts and it kind of stretches all over the place. I think this is going to look pretty cool, honestly, if it works. This music is relaxing. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Knucklehead, I see you asking about the felt. It's a, uh, it is kind of like making paper. You, like you have your pulp, but instead of pulp, it's hair. <laughs> So yeah. Let's put that aside. And so, see, this is going to be the part that flips over, like this. And so I can see right now kind of what the top would look like. And then this stuff that is touching um, you can see the plastic ends right here. There's this whole overlapping area right here that's going to felt into the background. So when I do the next one, I'll cover this, start another one, and then it'll attach down here. And I can do those as close together as I want, so I could make a ton of them. And then when they all, when I lift it up and it's all done, they'll all flip up like this and hang hopefully sideways. We'll see. <laughs> but that's why we're testing today. But because this is the top one, I think what I want to do, because I am confident that it'll work, I think, I'm going to try just a couple more little uh, design element things where I make like rings of color, kind of like on these mushrooms over here that we were looking at earlier. I'll pull those into view. But as you can see, there's orange, there's purple, and then there's a big white line on the end. That's what we're trying to imitate here. 
And then instead of these growing on a tree, they'll be growing out of my sides. And for anybody who doesn't know why we're focusing on mushrooms so much, uh, it's because Scrummy uh, serves the Demon Queen Zugtmoy, who is the uh, queen of fungi and rot and decay and ooze and other stuff like that. And I love her! She's so cool! Actually, yeah, let's get some of this. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna use some of the silk. yeah, Knucklehead, um, if you are interested in this sort of thing, the whole first episode of Craft Tags, which should be on the D&D Twitch channel, um, I mean the D&D YouTube channel, sorry, uh, I went into, uh, depth about Scrummy and how she raised herself in the Underdark with the Myconids and how her whole philosophy and everything about her is influenced by the Myconids. And, uh, she basically dresses like them, kinda, but, you know, mushroomy, mushroomy stuff. Mushroomy aesthetic, I'll say. Hmm. We're losing a little bit of our green here. Actually, let's do let's do a couple little purples. And if this doesn't work, I can always embroider these colors on. Or uh, needle felting is a really good tool. You just uh, I would just put these on here and then use my needle felting tool to stab it into the wool. Um, the felt that's already made. So if this doesn't work, I have options to fix it <laughs> and make it what I was hoping for it to be. But we'll see. Maybe maybe it, we won't need to do that. I really like how this purple and green are going together. And I know they look very symmetrical and samey right now, but once we start the felting, they'll kind of move around and do their own little natural pattern thing. Which will probably look pretty cool. And then I've also considered like um, getting clear beads that kind of resemble droplets of water, or like goo, you know? And uh, sewing them on in different places so that it kind of looks like they're wet. Because I think that sounds gross and awesome. But yeah, so that's what the mushroom will look like. And this edge will probably be really irregular, which will be awesome. And then when we flip it upside down... Actually, I think I want to peel back some of these yellow layers and try to get... Try to get some more texture underneath that kind of resembles the little gills. And I feel like... This might even help with structure, having these little hard knob things underneath. And since they're sandwiched, they won't be like this, which is obviously a little crazy. Uh, Knucklehead, I see asking, um, can you elaborate on why plastic? Doesn't that make it weak? Um, if you mean the, the plastic, uh, sheets, that's just to keep, um, different parts of wool from sticking together so that they become separate layers. 
um, because we're trying to go for this, like, um, this uh, 3D effect where it's only connected on the edge, and then it'll hang off like a tree growing out of the side of a, or like a mushroom growing out of the side of a tree. So yeah, you can kind of see those in there. And I think that looks cool. But so yeah, this won't connect to this part. And we'll felt it all in one big slab. But then yeah, we'll slip the plastic out. And they'll be separate and they'll just kind of flop around. So yeah, that's exactly right. I know I've, I've been awful at explaining my process so far. Uh, but I'm trying not to mess it up! But so yeah, there's the first one, and then we'll, we'll, uh, cover that up to the point where we want the next one to start. And then we'll do a big one right here. So, let's start again with the top, the part that's going to be visible when it flips up. And so this one will make a little bit more blue. So yeah, let's uh, sandwich this up. Today's such a chill day, guys. I'm having fun. And actually, I think I want to use some of these silk carrier rods in this one. Let's, let's just go nuts and we'll do all the stuff and then see what it looks like on this test piece. Oh god, look at this. I don't even know... Ah, look at that! Ew, it's so grody. Yuck, and they're crunchy. They're really crunchy. Oh, man, if that doesn't look like mushroom gills, I don't know what does, because that's hilarious. Oh, man, you guys, this is going to be funny. Ew! Ew, and it's gross. <coughs> oh, it smells so bad. I'm not even somebody that really reacts to smell that much. But goodness, this is something. Looks like a face hugger skin. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Wow! Oh man, this is cool! <gasps> oh man. Oh my god, look, it kind of looks like lace! <gasps> you guys! Oh, I didn't know that they did this! Look at that. Oh my god! So yeah, for anybody wondering, this is these are called silk carrier rods. Um, any any fiber store 
that carries the, or that sells wool um, or silk uh, online. I like worldofwool.com. I also found um, outbackfibers.com. They have a lot of cool pre-made stuff. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna lay that in there and see what that looks like. Let's move it up so that it's up near the edge. Ugh! Oh God. Oh look, so I wonder if that happens every, I mean, cause this one's almost like a, this one's almost like a, sh like a bandaid, like a sheet. Like it's really, it's really compact, like, like a piece of fabric. But I wonder if you can pull them apart, pull all of them apart actually. Wow, oh. Yeah. Oh, look. They all come apart. This one's making a little bit more of like a like a tuft pattern. Oh, that's so cool though. Ugh. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to be using these like to sew on later too. Oh, it's so cool. I'm just going to leave that naked right there and just like see what happens. Um Into my plastic. Oh, it's on the floor. I'm gonna cut another piece of plastic just to keep that safe, make sure it doesn't move around. While I flip it over. Oh, that's gonna be so cool, you guys! Oh, I'm so excited. So yeah, let's make the little design that goes on top. We'll use some more of this uh, silk. Cause it's shiny. We'll use thinner lines this time and see if we like that even more. Sticks to your fingers. All right. One more. Oh, man. On the bottom, that looks so cool. God! Here, let's take this one off. I think I like it like that. Man, you guys! This is gonna be so weird. I'm so excited. Um, I'm wondering if I should do more, because I don't know how much time I'm gonna have, and I want you guys to be able to see this, so... Why don't I just start felting? Um, this part, and then, uh, we'll just call it a test. And if I really like those things, I can always cut them off and sew them onto the new ones. But I have to make about four more of them, so I might as well stop now and see how it goes. Let me put my white silk back in its bag. Watching you do this has convinced me that I do not have enough mushrooms in my wardrobe. <laughs> I agree. I actually really started liking the aesthetic that I, I put together for Scrummy. And so I started buying um, tie-dye leggings that are kind of in those natural color palettes. Um, and I really liked it. Like, like uh, tie-dyeleggings.com has some really cool... Um, designs that are, you know, like, yeah, they've got the crazy pinks and purples and yellows and blues and greens and all that stuff, but some of them are a lot more subtle, um, like just mixes of brown and olive, which I really enjoyed, and I thought those were really cute, and I have about four different pairs now. 
So I feel ya on needing some more mushrooms in your life. It's kind of a cool look. Alright, so, um... The other thing I wanted to test today, what we're gonna do is just move this guy over here. Well, let's move him over. Him? They? It? So that'll be over here, and I'm going to also try to make some of that veil that I posted. Um, there isn't any mushrooms with veils in my book, but if you uh, Google uh, l Veiled Lady Mushroom, um, Well, if you Google mushroom veil at all, you'll see what I mean. They like, the cap sprouts this big long veil, and it looks kind of like honeycomb. And we're going to be trying to make some panels of those that'll attach to the bottom of the corset and kind of hang down almost like little skirt panels. Not quite as deep as, or you know, as long as a skirt would be, because Scrummy also has pants. Um, but just to add a little bit of layering down there. And then also that's where I wanted to bring in some of these uh, brighter yellows and greens. On the, on the concept art, you can kind of see these squiggles of yellow and green down here at the bottom. That's, that was to signify that, but we're going to actually be... spending a little more time making them look prettier than just squiggles. But so what I'm going to do is just make kind of like a, a thinnish pile with no backing. Um, usually I've got the silk gauze on the back, but this is just wool on wool on wool. And we're going to be doing it pretty thin, and you'll see why here in a second. Um, and I do want to darken it a bit, so let's get some of this darker green in here. And the fun part about this is that I can choose which side I want to be facing up since there's no back. So if one side turns out cooler than the other, Great. Some of this crazy yellow. Crazy. And I'm kind of doing a variation of yellows, like I started really with that greenish cold yellow this one over here, and I know it's hard to see, but as we get down a little bit, um, this will be the bottom where it hangs. It's going to get a little bit more warm yellow and darker green. Mixed together, and I'm really just kind of letting them fall wherever they want to. To really get the most natural color placement I can. And this is kind of the same technique I used on Kathris's uh, cloak. If any of you have seen pictures of uh, the Kathris costume I made for Chris Straub um, on the C-Team, 
he had a cloak of stars, but it had tentacles inside of it, and I made all of that out of felt. And um, it was kind of just a big mishmash of red and blue colors. Um, and it turned out really cool. It was it was funny. They're underneath of his cloak, and he can like shoot them out whenever he wants to. It's it's pretty funny. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna build up just a little bit more because this is just a tad thin. We do want it to be strong, just not heavy. Now, look at this. We're going to take our weed sprayer. It's got soapy water in it. We're just going to get it wet. And then same with this. And I'll wet the rest of that later. But first, I'm going to show you how I make the little veil stuff. So you're just going to go in here and like start pulling it apart in little circles. Like you just decide where you want the hole to be. Doop, 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 doop. And this will be a little bit of a process, because I'm going to make these holes, and then I'm going to do a little bit of felting, but then I need to come back in and make sure none of my holes are closing up that I want, you know. Um, somebody asked if there's a video of making the Cloco Stars. There's not. Um, I, <laughs> I had to make all those very quickly, and... Uh, Updating for social media wasn't a huge priority on that project, and I'm sad to say a lot of it didn't get filmed. Um, I really would have loved to film that and the the making of Dinar's helmet. I know people have asked about that, and then his armor and stuff. There's a lot of stuff I wish I could have shared with people, but maybe in the future. Yeah, as you can see, I'm starting to get uh, kind of like a, a mesh veil looking thing. And some of them can be big, some of them can be smaller. It's all up to me. We're going to make a big one right here. Big one. As you can see, this starts to look pretty natural, like, especially if you don't worry about, about it too much and you just kind of go at it. It's really not hard to imitate nature, especially when you just kind of let it do its own thing. how quickly we can make all these little meshy things. And this will be a test too. If I don't like it, I can try again with more or less or different colors or if I need to figure out a different way of doing this hole making so that it looks better. 
That's what we'll learn. We'll make one really big hole over here. <laughs> Ew, it kind of looks like those frogs that have their babies on their backs. Like after the babies are all out. Bleh. There's a fear. There's a fear um, of holes that's got its own name, right? And that frog thing is one of those fears. Feeling those fungal vibes. I'm glad. Uh, knucklehead, I've never used fiberglass. Um, I've never wanted to make anything rigid with felt, but that is a really good point that you totally could use. Uh, you could even just uh, make the felt and then glue it on to... A rigid surface if you wanted to make something like a like especially for like movie set stuff like if you wanted to make a a really specific looking bog tree or something or you know I've seen a I've seen makeup artists actually use um, red wool fibers and they glued them on in such a way that they looked like veins it was like very convincing <laughs> so uh, that's, that's a really good point. Um, wool and felting doesn't just have to be for making clothes. Speaking of makeup, my uh, really awesome scleral uh, scrummy contacts came in the mail. And uh, I know I, I posted a picture of myself wearing them, but I didn't add it to the Twitter moment because it was just like a, like a dumb selfie I took. <laughs> so... Uh, Eventually, um, on one of these streams, I'll be doing a makeup test where I have the contacts in and they're really, they're crazy big and they make my eyes look um, a lot bigger. They don't cover my eyes completely, they just make my pupils look really big, which in turn makes my head look smaller, kind of the way babies' eyeballs look bigger in their heads, because they are. You have the same size eyeball, I think, from birth, and then your head just grows bigger. But that's why, like, babies look cute is because their eyeballs are bigger. Like, literally bigger in proportion to the rest of their head. And there's kind of, like, a weird, that kind of effect when I wear these contacts. So, um, for some stream soon, I'll, I'll put the contacts in first and then I'll just have them in while I do my makeup for the rest of the stream. And then I'll, I'll apply the, the big gnome ears and everything and... We'll get some moss and fungus looking stuff on my face and I'll show you guys how to uh, shade your face so that you can change what shape people are seeing and we'll see how gnome-like I can look. So that'll be really fun. I'm really looking forward to that stream. I'm going to add a little bit more water because the edges are kind of drying out here. But then, um, I'm going to spray some more water on here. I'm getting water all over my desk. There we go. And then the one right under that. Yeah, um, this will help me. I'm just going to felt this whole piece as a test and not do any more of those little shelves until I know what those look like. 
and then I'll just remake the whole piece. Or if it's really good, I can always felt separate shelves and then just sew them on underneath and nobody will know. Um, so yeah, let me get the other piece of plastic. It looks like my plastic's too small to fit over everything I made. So we'll just do one and then I'll move it over and do the other one separately. But uh, at this point, I'm going to turn on the sander. So I'm going to mute myself so that you guys don't have to listen to that. But feel free to uh, chat in the chat or ask me questions and I'll get back to you. I'll probably have a lot of time to read here. Um, it should be done in like two minutes. But yeah, enjoy the music and stuff. Alrighty, so um, I'm not done yet, but I do just want to make sure it's doing it. It's already a good sign that it's not sticking to my plastic when I peel it off. Um, there are a lot of different ways to kickstart your uh, felting process, but I really love using the sander. But then at this point, we do just want to come back in, open up all these holes again, and make sure they're getting as open as we want. I saw Dr. Cantrez talked about uh, how the artistry of makeup is really overlooked by some people, and I, I really agree, and I'd love to talk about that because I think uh, like a lot of people, especially costume people, um, like cosplayers and beginning costume designers and things like that, um, don't always think about uh, how makeup can be used all the time, um, and because it, it's not just for making somebody look pretty. And usually that's what you'd, you know, assume. That's the first thing you think of is because obviously the makeup industry really only offers itself to one kind of person. Um, but I think that's even changing lately. And I've seen a lot of uh, men that like to look glamorous and uh, whether they're gay or not, just uh, doing, you know, doing their makeup. And it's really cool. And... Uh, I, uh, I actually, the other day, I had a lot of fun. I was looking at my husband, and I was like, because he's got, he's very pale. He's got brown hair in this part of his beard, but then everything in front, mustache, all of it, like, it's blonde. And he always jokes about it, and he always has, and he's fine with it, and he doesn't care. But, like, that doesn't happen to all guys. Um, and one day I was just like, can I do your makeup? And he was like, what? And I was like, I just want to see what your face would look like if all of your beard was brown and not partially blonde, you know? Uh, so he, he was like, sure, whatever. He was just like, I just reserve the right to uh, veto any pictures put on the internet, which was fine. I didn't really want to show anybody anyway. I just really wanted to see what it would look like. And it changed his face completely. Like... 
I didn't even recognize him. It was nuts. And, like, just something as simple as darkening the hair that's already on your face or, like, putting shadows underneath the tops of your, or, you know, the bottoms of your eyebrows to make your brow look like it's more in shadow. Like, there's a lot you can do, even if you want to look more masculine with makeup. And uh, I know a lot of people don't consider that. And that's fine. Like, it, it's not necessary, obviously. But um, for a lot of people... Uh, they don't look like the character that they're wanting to uh, cosplay. And even just a little bit of, you know, shadowing or hair color change makes a big impact. So, uh, especially on the makeup stream, I would really love to talk about that. I even, at some point, uh, I was messing around with uh, the idea of doing a stream with Eric Benson over on Penny Arcade because I did a cosplay stream with him and I was uh, helping him uh, try to figure out how to make him look make himself look more like Geralt of Rivia from The Witcher um, and he's got a very a very good base for that so it wasn't it wasn't like a lot of work or anything <laughs> but um, I was joking around that I would make myself look like Geralt from The Witcher just for fun as a part of the stream too and it never happened but it still would be fun to uh, just play around with the idea of like using makeup in a lot of different ways and I know there are other cosplayers that do that out there already and obviously there are makeup effects artists that are masters at that but um, I think that's something that cosplayers could totally use more um, okay so I've made my holes bigger again I'm gonna do another uh, set of sanding and I'll be right back okay Alright, so I hit it again. I actually need to clean up my mess because all the water is shooting out all over my desk. I know, I see somebody sees the, the new Beholder sticker on my desk today. I tried putting him right in the middle, but that's where the camera glare is worst. <laughs> and you couldn't see him at all, so I moved him over there. Yeah, he's our little beholder buddy. We should name him. Somebody come up with a cool beholder name for craft hags. This this specific craft hags beholder. I know that the pun people in the chat will handle it. 
<laughs> Fred. Somebody says Fred. Yeah, for some people just getting here, we are uh, making some crazy textures with felt today. Um, and I know we did that last week too, but this is going to be even weirder. And I am trying to control the amount of water on my desk because I am trying to be very careful of shock hazards because we are using electrical equipment like the sander. And the more water that's around for me to lose track of, the more likely I am to get hurt. We don't want that. I mean, I'm sure it'd be quite entertaining, but... <laughs> Alrighty. But because I felt this is this is pretty good, I'm gonna start rolling some of these some of these things together like this. To make them a little thinner. But not all of them. Just a few. Especially around the edges. We want that edge to be nice and solid. But then if you only rub together some of it, the other parts will stay more, um, flat and then it'll, it'll create like a, more of like a wave texture because it won't be really, uh, uniform but yeah once you get like let's say we really want this one to thin out look at that so we'll do that in a few more spots And this isn't going to look exactly like one of those little mushroom veils, because those mushroom veils are very uniform and, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm loving all the beholder names. Beauty. Oh yeah, and by the way, I, I think somebody mentioned earlier, but we do have a Discord. Thank you to Crystal for setting that up for us. But uh, if you want to go and uh, talk to crafters during the week when I'm not streaming or just share your ideas or ask for help, there's a bunch of people in there that are all very good at a bunch of different things. And that's our little gathering place. And so because we use so little felt here, this stuff is a uh, wool, I mean. I keep saying felt when I mean wool. I'm sorry. But some of it doesn't want to stick together very well. But because this isn't like a, a real garment that people need to wear all the time and like it doesn't need to like this is for decoration is what I'm saying it's okay that it's gonna be not very strong not very reliable but that is something you're, you're gonna want to consider if you want to make stuff out of felt is that felt is only good for some things But yeah, I think I'm gonna... Start beating it! We'll see what happens with this. Then we'll do our other experiment over here, separately. Kinda 
kind of want to just do this and see what happens. Alright, so this is quickly becoming a small mess, but that's good. We're gonna flatten it out and see what's happening. Oh boy, you guys. <laughs> oh, that's gross. Oh, yes. So if it's hanging, uh, let's say we want this to be the bottom, it's gonna do that. And see, it's, it's a little bit square, so what we might do is like, oh, let's just rip that. Let's just tear it, tear it off. And then, uh, let's stretch this one out. see how it looks now. Oh yeah, see now we're getting a little bit more of a round shape when it hangs. That's good. Yeah, that is super disgusting. <laughs> and perfect. Look at that, you guys. That is so gross. And it'll make just a nice little decoration. And obviously it's quite uh, fragile. Not all of this has uh, felted together really well. You can still see how thin it is. It's uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, oh, there's still plenty of water in it. So let's see if we can get it to shrink just a little bit more. I might put some hot water into it just to encourage it to shrink up more. <laughs> yeah, oboe. Uh, Obo Crazy has a great point that gross just means good on this stream. <laughs> gross is good. I mean, that's the that's the most fun part about character creation for me is that, you know, to Scrummy, gross is good and healthy and valuable and, you know, like because she lives with Mykonids, it's all about. Uh, it's all about promoting decay and the circle of life that way. So you do get to have fun playing with new ideas that normally most characters wouldn't be all about. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep this one, but I, I decided it got too long to be a thing that hangs off of my waist, and so we'll hang it this way instead. But then, uh, having those danglies down at the bottom, that one's, this one's kind of square. I don't know, let's see if we can fix that. Yeah, that's starting to look a little better. And then I can always trim off things that don't quite hang right, or, uh, you know, they just aren't what I was envisioning once I get it on the corset. Man, this is going to be the grossest corset. Yeah! Okay. We're starting to get there. Look at that. Look at how disgusting that is. Ugh. Oh, I love it. And I'll post better pictures of these on the Twitter and Instagram um, 
I might not add it to the moment until uh, it's all on the corset and it looks great, but like, wow, look at, look at all those different color variations in there. That looks so cool. And then, like, just kind of hanging off my waist down by the side, we'll add a nice uh, textural layer. That's actually perfect. I love that. I am actually going to use this. Um, I love it. I'm in love. All right, I'm going to hang it over here so nothing happens to it. And then let's see about this dude. Whoop. So for anybody who just got here, I built shelves of mushrooms onto this uh, piece of wool. There are a lot of different techniques in here, but um, I think they're going to be pretty cool. And so um, with these, these layers of plastic, what they're doing is keeping it from sticking where I don't want it to stick. I'm going to scoot that one in just a little bit. It got moved. And then where um, where it doesn't stick, hopefully they'll flop over. So let's try this. Let's see if this will work. And I'll say it again, if you're going to be doing this, uh, be very careful with the electrical stuff. Please don't hurt yourselves. Because there is water and electricity in the same area. Just be smart, people, okay? Jeez. Alrighty, I'm turning on the sander, and I will be right back. All right, let's see if this sticks. Yeah, so as you can see, I didn't do any felt, or I didn't do any sanding over here, um, and it stuck to the plastic, and it didn't come all the way off, luckily. But over here, let's see if it's sticking. It's starting to. I'm gonna get a little bit more soap. Somebody just rang my doorbell. And I'm hoping it's Girl Scouts. Okay, 
So this silk carrier rod thing that we were very excited about isn't sticking super well, so I'm gonna try rubbing it with some soap here. Yeah, I have high hopes for this thing. I think it'll be cool. Man, we had we had several Girl Scouts come to our door, like from our area, and like we just couldn't say no to any of them. <laughs> so the first one, I think we bought Thin Mints, and then the next one, I think we bought the Samoas from. And then I was like, well, if there's another one, you better get those lemon ones. We'll just we'll just keep ordering different cookies from each girl. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I mean, cause hey. And so at this point, we're gonna also try to shove the ends together a little bit. Um, because we don't want like these, these areas where it just kind of dissolves into hairiness. You know, we want a actual edge that looks like a real mushroom. And I'm gonna see... Oh yeah, it's already sticking! Look! It won't come off! Yee, it's working! It's working! And then I wanna move these little silk strings around a little bit so that they get a really nice looking uh, texture going. And we'll flip that plastic over and see how this one's doing. Yeah, this one's doing pretty good too. But yeah, if this stuff interests any of you guys um, and you're looking into felting more, definitely Google Shibori. It's a S H I B O R I felt. Um, they uh. They do a lot of different techniques with plastics, and uh, I've seen people put plastic, like let's say you put down some wool, you put a, a disc of plastic in, and then you put down more wool on top, and then uh, you just remember where the little disc of plastic is in the wool sandwich, and then they cut the like a, a hole there, and they pull the plastic out, and then they can like stretch it open, and it almost makes like a flower, looking thing and then like that's just that's just one thing I've seen people do like you can make so many shapes and I'll say it again it's shibori felting um s-h-i-b-o-r-i -I. and people are doing some crazy stuff and it's pretty cool all right so we've babysat that a little bit more everything's doing what we were hoping it would I think this time, though, I'm going to move the plastic over and then felt the other side just to make sure the vibrations are getting all the way through there. And all the water and stuff. We'll add some more soap to this side. Yeah, that's gonna look so shroomy! Alright. Here I go!
Alrighty, let's see what we got here. <laughs> um, I see somebody asking what the vibration does. It, uh, it, basically, it's what mats the hair together. Like, if you wanted to make a mat of hair, you'd go like this. Um, but I can't do that with felt that's been neatly laid out, or else it would just go everywhere. So, the, uh, the sander just does mini vibrations, and way faster than I can, and, uh, um, more efficiently. So it happens a lot faster, which is really cool. Um, usually I think, like, this is a pretty old, uh, way of making cloth. Like, people have been doing it for a really long time, and I think usually they would have, like, a washing board, um, or they just, you know, knead it like dough. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it, but. So now I'm just going to start working this by hand a little bit. And I won't be able to pick it up and throw it so that it shrinks a lot, but I will be able to show you how how they kind of just hang off like that. Um, that one actually looks really cool. And as you can see, that line of white felt just kind of made its own little ridge. Um, or, you know, ripple. That's the word I wanted. Um, because on a lot of these mushrooms, the, the texture and the lines, they're not straight. They're wavy. They've got a lot of variation to them, and that's how they look so natural. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to find one now that I'm looking for it. But yeah, here's kind of what we were going for, for anybody who didn't see the beginning. Um, this kind of mushroom, it has those little like lines in it of different color, and we didn't copy the colors exactly. Um, because they didn't fit in with our color palette that we planned in episode one. But we did replace them with some other colors, and I think they're gonna go pretty nicely. But so then at this point, if I want it to just shrink in the middle, I'll just go like this. And then that'll leave kind of a ripply edge. And I might not get it to do that uh, before our time is over today, but um, if not, I'll make sure to post lots of pictures of the finished product and when it, when it actually worked out and what it was supposed to look like the whole time. But, but this was a pretty good experiment for Just testing it out. And we do want to make sure that this bottom edge here is getting really tight because this is what's going to hold it on. Yeah, as you can see, this one's a little big. It might just fall flat, um, which was part of the test. We needed to know that. Um, after it shrinks up, I'll see how, how small it gets, but um, I'll continue adding more mushrooms. And I could even add, there's so much room in between where this one sticks and where this one sticks that I could, I could put like two more in here if I wanted to. Um, Yeah, we'll just rub it this way, and then we'll rub it this way, 
And we've got plenty of soap, so it'll it'll be nice and sticky and create that uh, get that shrinkage we want. Let's see how it's looking on the back. Because this was the part I was really excited about. Where'd my other little plastic... There, there it went. We don't want this to stick to the next one. Let's make sure it's sticking on the back here too. This is quite wet. Let's uh, sop that up just a bit and clean up all this excess water. Keep our table dry. So did we come up with a, a beholder name for our little friend over here? I saw Fred. Fred! Mississippi! Oh man. Haga, Philip Tenai, Bell, Ivan, oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Ivan has me cracking up. Ivan. Oh, that's just Ivan. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe I'll put it to Twitter, because I know there's a lot of people that aren't here today. We'll have a Twitter vote. Ivan and Fred are totally going on there. I like Haga. Hagatha? Oh! Hagatha is really good. Oh, man. Yes! Oh, Hagatha. <laughs> Gosh. You guys are good at this. See, I'm the worst at words. I, I can't just make up fun words like that. I can't think of them. My brain don't do that. Alright, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to... Sand this one more time. And see how... Uh, how shrinked we can get it. Getting my book all wet. <sighs> and I am gonna take a minute to dry off the top because I know there's water all over this. Man. Hagatha is so good. A lot of, a lot of excess water. Alrighty. BRB.
All right, I'm back. So I flipped this one over and did a little bit of work. Um, with it um, open on the other side to try to make sure that this one was sticking really well. And it totally is now. Um, I can't pinch up any of that, which means it's sticking down real good. And it could use a little bit more, so I'm not going to go crazy yet. But, uh... Oh no, look! See, here's the... Here's why you need that plastic, is because this actually started felting to the top. Which is not what we wanted. I should have put plastic behind it. But, it's all good. It didn't stick. But I think what I'm going to do... Um, I'm just going to cut this backing. Because it's not going to be usable for a full piece anyway. So, I'm going to cut the rest of this off. So it won't be big enough to use for a whole pattern piece, but I can save that for something else. And then, I can actually start shrinking this. Yeah, I see you all liking Hagafa. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some of those names in the poll online. Um, Cause that's really funny. I think Hagafa is gonna take it, but I'll still leave it up to the people. B Hag door. Oh my God! Actually, the <laughs> my. My favorite character from the Birdcage, the movie, um, is Agador, Agador Spartacus, um, and I thought you typed be Hagador, which was really funny. One of my dogs is actually named Agador. Actually, it's his middle name, but uh, that's really funny. So be Hagador might be on there too. Hagatha. Behagador. <laughs> Good names, guys. And so now I'm just throwing this to try to encourage it to shrink. Um, getting all the fibers together. Next to each other. Scooching up against each other really encourages it to shrink into itself. But we do need to make sure we're paying attention to what's going on. Because it's really easy to just ball it up and then call it a day and see, you know, just throw it forever. But we don't want to do that. We want to make sure it's actually doing what we want it to do. So I'm even going to, I'm going to put it kind of in the way I want it to sit and then ball it up. Woo! There's a lot of soap. I'm going to go wash out this just a little bit and I'll be right back. Alright. Oh, it's not wet enough. Here, let's seep up some of this. I've got plenty of water on the table.
<laughs> I'm glad we're teaching you survival skills, Dr. Cantrez. So yeah, this is starting to... I mean, like, look, once it shrinks up, you guys, it starts to look really mushroomy. <laughs> look at that! Oh! So, on the corset, it'll hang like this. And obviously, this one's a little bit too floppy, but if there was another one under it, or if it shrunk a little bit more in the middle, it might stand up better. Oh yeah! But yeah, look, this is what we want. Look at that! Oh my god, especially that bottom one. Looks pretty darn shroomy. And then look at the bottom. Ooh, that's so gross. Oh, I love it. But yeah, so I could sew this onto uh, anything, honestly. I mean, this, one's a, this one worked a little better because it's not so long. Like, it doesn't come out from the side so much. But, like, let's just see what happens if I cut it. We'll put some squigglies in there, too. So this was a good test piece. See, like, we get to control how, how long it is. And that, that silk in there looks really nice and uh, in person you'd be able to see but it looks shiny because it's silk it's uh not bad our little mushroom flaps and then for anybody who missed it before i'll show this again this was the the mycelial veil that we made that's going to be part of the corset too um it'll hang off the bottom kind of like a little skirt flare thing but yeah, look at that, you guys! They did not turn out half bad. But yeah, um, I will keep you guys posted. Uh, I'll probably be doing a lot more of this this week, and then we'll start on the corset next week, or I might just go ahead and uh, make the corset so we can start playing around with beading and embroidery and... Whatever else I feel like it needs. We might need to do another round of dyeing. Um, we still got pants to make. We got a cloak to make. We got uh, a little mushroom familiar. I'm going to make him out of silicone. He may or may not light up. I don't know. There's going to be a makeup stream. We got all sorts of stuff coming up. And I don't even know what else we're going to do. But I have uh, 20 episodes to fill. So we'll see We'll see what I, what I pull out of my butt for this one. <laughs> But uh, there's plenty of work to be done, so uh, we'll we'll have a lot of fun trying out new things and uh, coming up with new fun stuff to put on this costume to make it just look as gross as possible. And uh, watch out for this Twitter poll where we name this guy or girl Hagatha, um, be Hagador or whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, stay tuned for Greg Tito coming up soon. They've got a lot of interviews today, and they're talking about. The new book that's coming out soon so uh yeah check out craft tags on instagram and twitter that's where i will be putting all the stuff uh if you miss any weeks or you just want to see what we've done already stuff like that and uh, i think this will be up on youtube i think they put these on youtube yeah but yeah and check out the discord if you just want to hang out with other people who like gaming and like crafting and make some friends there um or you know not i don't know you could lurk uh <laughs> But anyway, uh, everybody have a great week, and I'll see you later.